first thing we're going to be talking about um, is uh, agile and iterative project management. And it helps if I'm on the first slide rather than this last one. Let's make that big. Okay, can you still see uh, the title screen? Yay, fantastic. Right, okay, so we're just gonna talk a bit about some um, iterative um, project management uh, for your project, sorry, project management workflows for your project, uh, including ways to automate that. And we're gonna talk a little bit about Agile, but we're not gonna to touch on it a whole lot. We're more gonna take some of the spirit of Agile um, project methodology than actually teaching it because Agile itself, um, people tend to pay for days or weeks worth of courses for Agile project management. Uh, so this is me. You may have met me before. I'm part of Open Life Science. Um, and I, like I mentioned, I'll be talking about Agile. So that's actually got a sticky note background because anyone who has ever worked in a physical Agile software team will probably be familiar. There are post-it notes everywhere. It's a bit like the carpentries. <laughs> um, so what is Agile beyond a uh, word in English that means nimble? So it started in 2001 um, as a bunch of people getting together. They all worked for corporate software houses um, and they were a bit frustrated with some of the ways that things were working. And they wrote a short manifesto about ways that they wanted things to get better. Um, and I'm not going to read all of this because some of this is very corporate and software-y. So most of us don't necessarily have customers and many of our projects may not be software. Um, but if you look in the middle of the big words, individuals and interactions over processes and tools was one of their core values. Um, another core value, I'll skip to the bottom of the large text ones, is responding to change of a following a plan. Um, and perhaps the moral of the story that I'm trying to get to here is what they were favouring was flexibility and talking to people and interacting with people over really strict rule bound um, project management styles and behaviours. Um, or to explain a bit more what they were pushing back against when Agile was founded, um, on the left here we have the waterfall methodology, which is when someone is designing a software project, um, one way that you can do this is you gather requirements and then you move on to designing based on those requirements, you implement those requirements and then you verify that the thing that you have implemented works as according to the requirements in the original step. Um, one, one flaw with this is that you're usually verifying that it works based on the requirements and not necessarily based on what the customer wants. Um, and it's called waterfall because it's very rigid and you flow from one step and down to the next step and you can't go back. So if this was over a three year timeline, you might spend the first six months gathering requirements, two years designing and implementing, and then the final bit verifying and maintaining. Um, and part of the problem with this project, um, project management methodology is that if you didn't do anything right at any point like you misunderstood the requirements you couldn't go back there wasn't time left in the schedules and the behaviors um, and it meant that sometimes the thing that produced was very much to specifications but not necessarily what anyone really wanted um, and so Agile pushes back against that and says, we need to be interacting with people all the time. We need to be doing things in small chunks and it needs to be iterative. So that's what the right hand diagram is here. So if you look at the gray uh, cubes, we have a backlog. These are items, these are things that need to be done. And you take off a small discrete chunk at any given time. Um, you work on that task that might be a day or a week or a month's worth of tasks. But once that's done, you then release it. Um, and the idea is that at any given time, what you're releasing is actually um, a complete project with just a little bit more on each time. Um, and then you also, you get feedback from the people you're working with, whether that be a customer or in um, a non-software scenario, it's more likely to be perhaps your community or your peers. Um, and then you pull that back. And so when you've had feedback, you, you'll end up adding more items to your backlog. Um, and so it's a much more circular cycle. And it means that um, releases are shorter, smaller, um, but they tend to be what people want, uh, which tends to work much more nicely. Um, or to sum this up again, so whilst this was originally a software development methodology, it's also really, really good for project management in general. Uh, and the idea is you break your work up into really small chunks uh, rather than having a really fixed long timeline. Um, and I think given that many people um, in academia may be working in, on short-term grants of a year or three years, um, I'm, 
again, you can see why perhaps having something iterative that you're constantly checking whether or not it was what you want over a certain time scale, it's, it's logical to work iteratively as well in um, scenarios where we may be working. So how might I want to use this in my project, you say? So I, I was really proud of this little image I found where it has a big chunk, the big egg full of smaller eggs. <laughs> just going for the idea that we have a large, um, a large milestone of some sort, but then you break it down into the smaller chunks and the smaller tasks that you might want to work on. Um, so in this case, we're calling a large chunk a milestone. So some main large goal that you might be wanting to work on. Pick that milestone and start to break it down into tinier tasks. Um, and I would suggest try and get those tasks to be between one and two hours to no more than a day or two. Um, if it's going to be taking more than a day or two, there's a good chance that you can't estimate how long it's really going to take because it's comprised of so many different things that you might be forgetting some. And that it's always better to break it down into smaller tasks until you really can es estimate easily how long they're going to be. Um, and so I have a couple of real world examples of um, existing projects broken down into nice small tasks. Uh, so this is a project board on GitHub that has uh, broken down into releases. It's a roadmap, basically. And this is uh, where I work, by the way, into mine. And um, so it's a biological data warehouse, um, which is kind of irrelevant at this point. But what I did want to show was that on the left, we have um, Intermine 4.1.2. This was a release plan that we have, we set in January, and then we have a set of tasks. And you can see each of the tasks actually is complete because you can see the little um, exclamation mark with a check mark on the left. Um, and that one's actually already been released, which is why all those tasks are complete. And then the next one we have at 4.1.3 in the next column, we have some tasks that we think we're gonna release in February. Um, and as we get further into future, things get vaguer and vaguer. So into my 4.2.0, we say spring 2019. This is a very Northern hemisphere centric, I do apologize. Um, but again, we, we're no longer at the point of months because we know that this is bigger. This is harder for us to estimate because it's further away. Um, and the final column on the right, which is kind of cut off into mind 5.0, so far in the future, we haven't broken it down into many tasks and we haven't estimated when it will be yet. Um, so the closer something is, the more granular it should be effectively. Um, or here is another example. This is the binder hub for the Turing Way. Uh, and one thing that I think is really nice um, in this one is that rather than having the releases like we had on the previous one for Intermine, we actually have a set of, um, a, there's a flow where tasks can run through. So on the left, you have tasks that haven't been done yet in your to-do. In the middle, you have ones that we're currently working on. And then on the right, we have tasks that are already done. Um, and what's really nifty is that GitHub will actually um, take pay attention to the actions that you're taking in these tasks and it will automatically move them through the board. So um, tasks that are in to do that you begin work on will automatically move into pr in progress and when you close a task it'll automatically hop over into done. Uh, so it means that you have a really nice transparent roadmap for anyone that you, they can see what you're working on um, but it's actually not that much admin work because a lot of it is automated um, as a nice efficient and easy workflow. Um, and then I've tried to create an example that is a bit more hands-on to something that everyone can maybe relate to. If you have a relatively young project, then you might be thinking about uh, a milestone for you might be how to prepare a website for my project. Um, and so I've broken that down into two possible tasks. One would be domain names. I want to get a domain name for my project. Uh, on the right hand, I have to create the content for my website. Um, and then since those are also kind of vague, I break those down further. So domain names, I say, let's agree on a domain name with my team members, purchase that domain name, and then set it up on GitHub, since we'll be using GitHub to host our website. Oops, I went far, too far. And on the right, I've uh, broken it down into ways to create content for my website. Um, and then in scenarios where the task was too vague, like write an about page, I have also broken it down to gather bios, emails, pictures. Um, so each time when the task looks larger, break it down to a smaller size. Um, and then I've also set up a demo project board on GitHub so that you can actually see some of the automation. So has that, uh, can you see my GitHub screen or is it still the slides? You can see GitHub. Fantastic. Okay, so these are the same tasks that I had shown in the slides. Um, and I closed this task earlier. I said we've already agreed on a domain name. We can click on that. You see, we thought, oh, 
ah, let's use openlifesci.org for our website. And we agreed on that. When I closed it, it automatically got moved into the done column. Uh, so let's say that now I have actually just purchased it. And I think, well, that seems good. I'm going to close it now so that I can I'm just gotta move this thing out of the way. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to close this issue since we've now purchased our domain name. Uh, so I've clicked on it. I'm going to say I purchased this. Yay. And now when I close and comment, if I go back to the board, um, you can see that that has automatically moved to the done column. Uh, so it, it becomes very effective and easy way to actually um, automate some of the task workflows that you've been working on when it's broken down very efficiently and cleanly like this. Um, and the other thing I will show, two more things. One is if you add tasks, uh, you can create issues on GitHub like normal. So these are just normal GitHub issues. So if I go to my issues here, you can see these are all my issues. And these are, for example, convert bios to markdown. It's exactly the same one as in here and a bit further down. Oh no, it's not there. Haha. <laughs> okay, it can be. So I've clicked add cards on the top right and I can literally just drag that in and say that's still to do. Um, and you can also drag cards between these columns manually if there's some reason that uh, you feel like that's necessary as well. Um, and you can also see here there's a tracking bar up on the top left where there's the purple and the green. Gives us an idea which, which, how many tasks are done, how many are in progress and how many are still to do. Uh, so it's a nice effective way to actually manage your projects um, in a public and efficient way. Um, and that's as much of the demo as I will add now. Oh no, I'll add one more thing. So if something for some reason you don't want to make an issue, let's say it's it's not formal enough or it's not defined enough to make an issue clearly, you can just add quick to-do notes here. So let's say I want to add a contact, oh, I'm typing that wrong, there we go, add a contact page. And that's just using the plus on the top right, adding a note. Um, so you can see that is slightly different from the others. Where has it gone? There we go. So that's not actually an issue. Um, but th that means it doesn't appear on the issues if for some reason I don't want it to. But then if I wanted to convert it to an issue, I could do so as well. And now it will appear here. So there should be seven in the issues now. Yeah. So it's a nice way to manage your tasks. Uh, so that's all I'll go into for this bit at the minute. If any of that interested you, um, I haven't touched all that much on Agile methodologies, but there are a lot of different things that you can learn. Uh, so one Agile methodology is Scrum. Uh, this has a lot of ceremonies and um, a lot of formality, which seems ironic given that um, actually Agile talked a lot about not, not having processes. <laughs> uh, extreme programming is another Agile methodology. Kanban is actually the um, methodology where you saw those boards, the project boards we were moving things from to do to done and so on. That is actually the Kanban methodology, um, but you can read more about that as well. Uh, we also have a link to interactive interact, sorry, iterative interaction design. Um, so UX, user experience design, uh, tends to use a similar iter iterative looping back process. Um, so if you care about how people enjoy working on your project, it's definitely worth a bit of a read of that. I've added a few bits of um, the Agile glossary, some of the jargon they use. There's a lot of jargon in, um, in Agile. Um, I could probably have five or six slides comfortably just covering that, but those are some of the ones that you're most likely to encounter. Um, and Cyril Harriet, who's also a Software Sustainability Institute fellow, has an interesting project to get more Agile into academia. Uh, so there's an interesting blog post she's shared here. And finally, we have some more notes about GitHub project automation, if that's of interest to anyone.